Welcome back to the channel, Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and today we're going to be breaking down one of the new Battle Force box sets. This one for the Space Marine Iron Hands, March of Iron Strike Force. We're going to be breaking down not only the points and viability of this army set, and also the estimated value or savings over MSRP. This video is sponsored by CMO Games. More on that later. Alright, so let's take a look at the March of Iron Strike Force for the Iron Hands. All right, so here we have all of the box contents, and you'll see we have Iron Father Pharos, we have a Primaris Tech Marine, two Redemptor Dreadnoughts, and then a 10-man squad of Intercessors, or two 5-man squads. Uh, we know also from what Games Workshop has said so far that there will be not only decals, but also Iron Hands upgrade sprues present as well. So let's take a look at the actual breakdown and see what kind of points and what kind of bargain we're getting with this box set and if it's even viable. All right, so first we have Iron Father Pharos. He has 145 points and he is the linchpin of any Iron Hands army. He is basically what we call an auto include. You're never going to see an Iron Hands army without him in it. Now, his main goal is as a support character. He does have a 36 inch ranged heavy weapon with strength 5, minus 2, 2 damage. Which is pretty good not going to be dishing out a ton of damage but occasionally picking off a guy here and there he also has his harrow hand axe and then also a servo arm so if something is in combat with him he can deal with basic threats but again you don't want him in combat you want him specifically supporting things especially vehicles uh, he does have his signum array command ability uh, which lets him select one iron hands unit within three inches uh, and he gives that unit plus one to the attacks hit roll which is very, very good. So obviously, the more guns on whatever you pick, the better, as they're all going to be plus one to hit. He also has a five-up shrug, which is nice. The remainder of your army from their special ability is going to have a six-up shrug, uh, but for him, it's a little bit better. But again, you want to avoid any potential for damage if possible. Then he also has his rights of tempering, uh, which means any infantry models uh, that are iron hands gain a five-up invulnerable save in a six-inch bubble. So any infantry that's around him, which you're probably going to want to have something nearby him, is going to give a 5-up and vulnerable save. So it does benefit you to have a 10-man squad of intercessors or some other heavy infantry that doesn't normally have an invulnerable save close by him, not only for lookout sir abilities, uh, but also for this benefit as well. And then you also have the Blessing of the Omnissiah, normally reserved for Tech Marines. Uh, but in this case, he picks a vehicle within three inches and heals it an auto three wounds. No roll, no nothing, just heals it back three wounds, which is very, very strong. And then if and when you do take his Warlord trait, uh, basically gives him a six inch consolidation instead of three, uh, which is nice. But the special benefit of this is that he doesn't have to end this move closer to the nearest enemy. Normally, when you make that consolidation move, you have to move towards an enemy. For him, he can just move six inches anywhere he wants, which is pretty freaking awesome. So very, very strong Warlord trait. Overall, very strong character. And at 145 points, he is an auto-include in any Iron Hands army, big or small. So then moving on, we have our Tech Marine. The Tech Marine is basically going to share some of the same abilities that Iron Hand that Iron Father Pharaohs has. Uh, he's not going to do anything nearly as good, but having a second Tech Marine around to provide a little bit of combat support if necessary, but most importantly to buff and heal your other vehicles or dreadnoughts is very good. At 80 points for a Primaris Tech Marine, it's not a bad choice, but maybe a little bit redundant. You do have two vehicles in this box set, so not necessarily a bad thing to be able to heal both of them, but if your opponent wants to avoid your usefulness of your second Tech Marine or of the Tech Marine in this case, all they can do is just pour all their fire into a single vehicle so you can't heal both of them. If they're splitting fire between multiple vehicles, it's probably by force or you're playing a subpar opponent. All right, and then next we have our 10 Intercessors. So the 10 Intercessors are going to be good. You're going to need some kind of like core force or troops in this army regardless. Uh, so Intercessors are not necessarily a bad choice. You don't want to spread your troops too thin. And you don't necessarily want some forward troops like Infiltrators or Incursors. Because you do want to keep them close to Iron Father Pharaohs. So they can gain the benefit 5 up and vulnerable save. And potentially be used for some of his other buffs throughout the game. Uh, your typical Intercessor squad is going to cost about 200 points for 10 models with no upgrades. You have the ability to take a grenade launcher, 
uh, potentially like heavy weapon like a thunder hammer or power fist on the sergeant um, etc so overall i would say probably you're looking to spend depending if you break this into two five-man units or just run it as one 10-man unit somewhere about 220 to probably 260 if you don't take any upgrades you can get in there for 200 uh, but i likely would take some kind of threat uh, intercessors are still decent in combat and even something like a thunder hammer or a power sword for the points you're going to put into it is probably going to pay off because you have to figure that if you're out shooting your opponent they're going to try to get close to you get into combat isolate key units and destroy them so you want to be prepared for that so you want to have some kind of close combat counter threat all right and then next we have two redemptor dreadnoughts so you do have two options to arm the Redemptor Dreadnought. They automatically take one fist and then one main gun. You can take the Macro Plasma or you can take the Gatling Cannon. Both are pretty good choices. They do what they're meant to do fairly well, uh, but neither one is particularly amazing. The Plasma is very strong. You can overcharge it to do extra damage. The Gatling Cannon has a lot of shots and can take out some pretty weak chaff or with the extra ap and re-rolling ones from your iron hand ability while you're in the heavy doctrine uh, can be fairly strong so the truth is with the redemptors they're both pretty good here uh, it's not bad to have two of them 185 to 195 points not a ton of optionality there as far as the points but they are very strong units they're going to put some serious threat into your opponent uh, not only at range, but if they try to get up close as well. And having two of them is nice for redundancy. Uh, however, because there are two in the set, and because there is also Iron Father Pharos and a Tech Marine, you're not really ever going to want two of these, because you're just going to end up with too many of the same units, and a lot of which you can't use. Uh, so finally, we have the Iron Hands Upgrade Frame. Uh, so Iron Hand Upgrade Frame is cool. It's going to have some cool shoulder pads and little bits and bobs, uh, heads and bionic parts. That you can use on your intercessors uh, to make them look like they're from the iron hands chapter a little bit better uh, so overall pretty cool set right here uh, if you total it all up you're going to come out to 795 to 875 points the majority of the variation in points is going to come from how you equip your intercessors and whether you take one 10 man unit or two five man units so overall, as a starting force, I think this is a pretty nice setup. You have a little bit of everything you need. The most important thing is Iron Father Pharos, and then he gets his main benefits from buffing vehicles, so you want some kind of vehicles. The Dreadnoughts are nice because they have shooting threat, and then also they're very strong in combat. And then you definitely want some infantry bodies around as well. So what better than a squad of intercessors? With the current rules, you can pick this as a patrol detachment. With the upcoming Arcs of Omen rules and the changes to detachments, I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work. But essentially, you could fulfill the detachment for Arcs of Omen just by having another heavy support choice. Which is likely something you're going to do anyway. So you're just under about a thousand points right here. You could easily add a little something extra to the set. I would say probably the more heavy support choices, the better for you. So in this case, I would think either another Dreadnought, whether you want to take a Leviathan Dreadnought or possibly a tank. Uh, it'd be nice to have something with the hover rule or the ability to fly. Uh, something like a Gladiator is really nice for about 180 to 200 points. You get a little bit more mobile firepower. You're not going to have the combat threat that you get from the Dreadnoughts, but it is very strong. Uh, it doesn't have an invulnerable save. Uh, but we'll get the benefit from some of your other abilities the ability to hit a little bit better do a little more damage or to be able to pop over some key cover and shoot something that's not expecting it uh, always beneficial if you want a little bit of transport capacity on your tank and you still want to be able to dish out some firepower i uh, go with something like the repulsor or repulsor executioner they're pretty good but i feel like you overpay for the transport capacity and the overall damage output is much more similar to something like a gladiator uh, so you're probably better off going that route any other dreadnoughts would be nice uh, if you get into the super heavies uh, something like the astraeus is very very good but you're tying up a lot of your army in a single model probably one of the biggest issues that you're going to have with iron hands is an army that's not willing to come to you so if they're already doing a good job completing their secondaries or winning the mission they're likely just going to stay back and stay away from you and that's just not going to work for you so it's ideally you want to have some kind of unit that can go dig out units that you can't just see and shoot and eliminate so maybe something like a vanguard squad or assault squad 
uh, dish up with a couple of nice weapons, perhaps even assault intercessors or a chaplain on bike. Uh, there's lots of different options you could go with, but you want to make sure that you can go dig out whatever's hiding from you that's not coming to you. And if stuff is coming to you, you want to make sure that you can at least present some kind of like counter threat. Overall, I think this is a nice box set. Uh, it's pretty cool. And let's check out the savings. And now a quick message from this week's sponsor. This video is sponsored by CMOGames.com, where you can get 15% off most Games Workshop pre-orders, and they go live right at midnight Saturday mornings. CMOGames.com offers free shipping on orders over $25 in the U.S. 48, and most orders ship within 24 hours. CMOGames.com has been selling Games Workshop products online for more than 20 years, and customer service is their top priority. CMOGames.com carries the full line of Games Workshop products, including 40K, Age of Sigmar, Kill Team, War Cry, Paints, Hobbies, and Tools. Visit CMOGames.com using the affiliate link in the description below so they know you heard about CMOGames.com from Warhammer Man Studios. Now, back to the video. Alright, so here we have the cost breakdown. So for Iron Father Pharos, $42. The Primaris Tech Marine is $38. 10 Intercessors is going to run $60. And then Redemptor Dreadnoughts are $70 each. And then we have the Iron Hands Upgrade Frame uh, and Decals, which is $27. So the total this comes out to is $307. The estimated retail price, because we don't know specifically yet, we did just have two very similar Space Marine boxes come out with the Christmas boxes, and they were priced at $210. So we're going to assume $210 is the price. So if you're paying $210 and the MSRP of all the individual kits would be $307, you're getting roughly a 32% savings. Uh, so not a bad savings overall. I would say this is a nice box set for Iron Hands players. You're not going to want two of this box set, and it's not going to go particularly well with any of the other box sets offered from Games Workshop. You could use it with like the Space Marine Vanguard Strike Force or something like that. But the truth is, you're probably going to be a little too redundant with your troop choices. Uh, typically, right now, the way the meta is set up, you're typically taking fairly minimum troop choices in most lists. So having 10 intercessors and then also 10 infiltrators is probably a bit much. And then you're also going to have a lot of other units in there that aren't necessarily ideal. Something like an impulser might be okay to get your troops around. But honestly, you'd probably rather have something like a gladiator or a repulsor if you want the transport capacity. You're going to want more guns and less transport in my opinion. You could also go with something like some heavy infantry. Giving that 5 plus and vulnerable save is pretty awesome. So something like a squad of aggressors could be really strong. You can keep those over by Pharaohs. Give them the invulnerable save. Anything come close, you can unload on them with all of your shots. And then charge into combat and smash them with your fists. So in my opinion, there's lots of different ways you could go with this army. I think overall it's a nice starting set. And it uh, contains a lot of good and useful models. Although the redundancy in the set makes it so that there's not really a situation where you'd want two of this box. So I think my overall opinion is this is a nice box. It's a good saving at 32% off, especially if you use a retailer uh, that offers an additional discount as well. Would I buy this box if I was starting an Iron Hands army and didn't have anything else? Yes, I think there's a nice box and always the savings are nice. There's nothing in here that you're not going to use in a starting force. And as your army gets bigger, I think you're going to be happy with everything in the set as well. The Tech Marine could go either way since it's a little redundant with Iron Father Pharos. But the truth is, once you have a couple of vehicles and you're getting up closer to like 2,000 points, uh, it's not a bad idea to have essentially a Tech Marine, including father pharaohs in different places so that if they choose to shift all their fire or split their fire between multiple vehicles you have a way to kind of soak that up and uh, replenish some of those wounds so that is it for the iron hands march of iron strike force gotta say this is a good box set and if you're into iron hands if you're looking forward to potential changes in space marine secondaries points values or possibly even supplements coming in the future i think there's a nice pickup right here and would be a great addition to anyone's collection. Special thanks to CMO Games for sponsoring today's video. Let me know what you think down below. Do you have any favorite relics for your Iron Hands? Are you into specific Warlord traits or psychic powers to buff up your units? Uh, did I miss anything? Or is there a specific unit that you think everyone should have in their Iron Hands army? As always, if this is your primary force, I would appreciate any recommendations or suggestions for the community down below as that really helps people to get a first-hand look from a dedicated player. 
Well, that's it for today. Thank you all for checking it out and keep your eyes out for the rest of the boxes and breakdowns just like this. If you do enjoy them, make sure to like and subscribe. That's it for today. Special thanks to CMO Games for sponsoring this video. I am Warhammer Man, and this is Warhammer Man Studios, and I'm out of here.